So it's time for us to go ahead and take a look at the iPad 10th generation and see how this specific iPad holds up in 2023. Now, this was just an iPad Apple made. I almost kind of misspoke there. And this was a very good choice from Apple. I think they, you know, did a decent job at the design. I think the iPad, the base model iPad lineup needed a much needed redesign. And I think they did a good job with this one. I do think they kind of dropped the ball in a few areas in terms of price tag, in terms of the Apple Pencil support, maybe in terms of display, but I think it's not a big deal. But I do think overall, it's a good iPad that's definitely worth buying. But this iPad coming out made me kind of refine my choices and kind of, you know, I would say kind of drilled down my excitement and my, you know, love for the iPad 9 generation. The iPad right before this, which was the iPad 9, was so good. I love that iPad for that price tag. And those iPads have gone down in value so much. And not only though in the used market, there's so many trading deals and just so many random deals going on on Apple.com and on Best Buy and even Walmart. You can just go buy that iPad right there, and it's insane how good of a value that iPad 9 is. Probably less than $300 right now. So if you want to pick up some iPads, I would recommend buying. Links will be down in the description. You can get them from there, and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of this specific iPad, on the front of this iPad, we are getting a very, very big, very beautiful 10.9-inch a liquid retina IPS LCD panel. Now, the panel itself is, I would say, a good, it's the design that the iPad needed at the time. So Apple needed to remove the bezel, they needed to remove the home button. So this thing makes sense why they chose to go down this direction. But some things that kind of irk me a little bit, like 500 nits of brightness, that's not really that high. Although it's a good display, you know, it would have been kind of nice had it maybe been a little bit higher. You were getting a very high resolution display. The front camera is there. It's a good looking iPad. And I will definitely tell you, if you're planning on buying an iPad, you definitely want one that looks something like this rather than something that looks like in the iPad 9, in my opinion. So that's a pretty big asset going for this. Now there is no face ID on the front, which is not really that big of a deal, but there's no face ID on this. You'll have to use touch ID that's on the power button up top or on the side, depending on how you're looking at it. On the bottom, you have a USB type C port, which is good. But the issue with this USB C port is that with the Apple Pencil one support, you actually can't go ahead and just plug in an Apple Pencil one in this thing because clearly it's a lightning port and you have a USB C port. So the problem with this iPad is you have to have some sort of adapter or dongle to actually plug in this specific iPad with. That in and of itself is insane. I still can't understand in the back of my head why Apple decided to do this. If they wanted to make more money, they could have probably found another way to do it. I think this is just like an ugly look. It's a weird thing that you have to use a dongle to plug into a, you know, Apple Pencil. And I don't even think you can use it just any dongle. I think you actually have to use a proprietary Apple one. So I was not a big fan of that. I really hope Apple doesn't continue down this direction, but there's not really much we can do. We just kind of have to wait until Apple does something and then we complain about it and then they fix it. So that's kind of how it goes. Now, I do like this iPad because you do have flat sides. But one of the biggest assets of flat sides was having the Apple Pencil 2 support to plug into the top. You can't have that here. So it's even more of a like a flop in my opinion. Now on the back, you're getting that full on aluminum back, which is beautiful. You have that single camera setup on the top left as well, which is awesome. And this thing feels good. It looks good in the hand. You have tons of accessories that are supported within this iPad, which is really cool. So you can go ahead and use all those. Well, you have the Apple Pencil 1 support, which I mentioned, but you have like cases, you have you know, Bluetooth accessories. You have a lot of different things going on with this iPad, which is awesome. And I will definitely tell you, looking back, it's a beautiful iPad. I'm a big fan of it. And I do think at the end of the day, it's definitely worth buying, at least on the outside for sure. Now, moving on to the camera side of things, this iPad on the back has a single 12 megapixel wide angle camera. So you can do 4K at 60 videos on the back of this thing, which is really good. And on the front, you have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, which you can do 1080p at 60 frames per second. Now, I will say both cameras are very good. You know, they're very decent quality cameras for their price tags. I think clearly the iPad 10 is not the cheapest iPad anymore. It's pretty much middle of the road nowadays. But with this iPad, you're getting a very, very decent camera for its price tag. I would say the back camera is better than the iPhone XR. It's probably like a, if like the if both cameras were combined on like an iPhone like 12, it's probably like the wide angle camera of an iPhone 12. So not like iPhone 13 or iPhone 14 quality, but it's still a good quality camera. And if you needed to use it for something, you could have a really good time. Funny enough, you're getting an ultra wide camera on the front, which I've always loved. Apple does this thing with spotlight or center mode, whatever it's called, I kind of forget what it's called, but essentially keeps you center and frame in your video calls. And this iPad has that type of capability. I think it's called center stage now. And that's an 
amazing feature. I love the fact that Apple did that. And that in and of itself is another big asset for this iPad. In fact, there are lots of iPads that came out like in the last like two to three years that still don't even have that type of capability. But this iPad has it, which I'm a massive fan of. So thumbs up for me from my perspective for the cameras. I think they you know, hold up fairly well, not perfect, but I think they definitely get the job done. Now, another big asset going on for this iPad is probably with its software and longevity. This iPad is going to be lasting for quite a bit of time. It's practically just getting started with software updates, and that's easily one of my most favorite things going on with this iPad. You can easily go ahead and use this iPad for such a long period of time, and that is one of my favorite things going on with this tablet. So if you are planning on buying an iPad like the iPad 10, this thing is going to be not only lasting for a long period of time, but it's also going to be a very good quality iPad that's going to be you know, supported for tons of years. So if you wanted to go ahead and buy this thing today, this thing's going to be lasting you until, pro to be honest, it's probably going to last you until like 2027, 2028, maybe like this iPad could last forever. For example, the iPad fifth generation that came out many, many years ago, which has the same chipset as the 2015 iPhone is still kind of supported with software. So there's still lots of hope for these types of iPads lasting way longer than you'd think. And that is a beautiful thing for sure. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Now, another big thing with this specific iPad is actually with its performance. I think the performance and just the internals of the iPad 10th generation are beautiful. And I think that's a big asset for this type of you know iPad. You're getting that Apple A14 Bionic chip inside of it, which is pretty much the same thing as like an iPhone 12, pretty much. And you're getting four gigabytes of RAM. So this thing power wise and performance wise is practically almost the same thing as an iPhone 12. So when you think of an iPhone 12, when you, when you think of the power of this iPad, you need to think of the iPhone 12. That's kind of the best way to kind of think about things. So this iPad is going to be very fast still. It's going to have a lot of performance. It's going to be good in the heavier intensive applications too. And the best thing is with Apple Silicon is that, you know, basically whatever you do, it's not really going to overheat your phone like crazy. It's, you know, going to manage the cooling system behind your phone fairly well. And there's not going to be like endless amounts of issues you're going to have. And because that Apple A14 body chip was already kind of refined by Apple throughout the last few years. There's not really a big like system-wide issue going on with those chipsets either. So I think that's a big massive asset going for the iPad 10. Although it, like I said, it's not the Apple A15 or Apple A16 bonding chips and it doesn't have six gigabytes of RAM or eight gigs of RAM or even 12 like the iPad Pros. And this thing for what you're paying for, I think is a very, very decent price. And I think that's an awesome thing that Apple kind of did here. So overall, to kind of sum up this whole entire video, what I'll tell you is I definitely do think the iPad 10th generation is completely worth buying. I think it's a very good tablet that Apple made. And I, of course, it does get better than this. You know, the iPad Air 5, I think, is better. The iPad Mini 6 is probably better in some areas. The iPad Pros are clearly better. The M1 iPad Pro is a very solid device. But I do think when I look back at something like the iPad 10, I kind of am still irked by the Apple Pencil thing. I just, I don't know why, it's just so hard for me to kind of overcome that. And I feel like that was just such a blatant attempt from Apple to go ahead and literally just like make more money. And I still don't understand, like they they make so, they make so much money. They could have probably found other ways to go around it, but I think that's how I feel. It's more emotional than anything else. If you want to save a lot of money and get an iPad that's almost like this, I think the iPad 9 is probably one you might want to consider. But in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit the subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.